Hello everybody, Sengs Folger here, and as you can see, I have this really cool clock in front of me. Now, this clock actually keeps um, accurate Minecraft time, so it goes around twice in one day, once during the day and once during the night. And uh, one of the really cool features that I have built into this thing is that even if you go to sleep or everyone on the server goes to sleep, um, at noon, it resets itself back to 12. So when the sun is directly in the top of the sky, then it will it will reset itself. And as you can see, it's obviously not supposed to be 4 o'clock. It's almost the middle of the day. But if we wait for just a, a little bit longer, then we will see that it will reset itself. So um, I achieved this by not actually using a master hopper clock, which will, you know, it'll change the, the hour every time it, it goes back and forth. But uh, instead, I used just a little a, a little clock with a whole bunch of T flip flops. So when the daylight sensor is strong enough to output a uh, a, a current uh, against the uh, anyway, when 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 it, it's in the top of the sky, it will reset all the T flip flops, and it will put it back to 12. So I think this is pretty cool, and I've been working on it for a while. Um, I haven't been working on it like non-stop since I, since I uploaded my last video but uh it, I've been swamped with school and sports and all that stuff but I hope you like this and and they were good there it is it is directly above us and uh, we had a little note block and it went back up to 12 so I am going to just stand here and wait for one full day so you can see um, exactly uh, just why, that it goes around in the right amount of time so uh yeah um just enjoy this short little time lapse it won't be long maybe a minute or two and then we can take a quick look at the redstone <laughs> Alrighty, so, um, I've waited a little bit too long, but the sun is a little past directly in the sky, and we just hit 12 o'clock, or well, a little, a little bit ago. Anyway, um, so, it works pretty well, and now we are going to go check out the redstone. Alright, so here's the clock without all that mountainous stuff, and, uh, it's pretty compact, and I'm going to basically try to explain how it all works um, circuit by circuit. So here it is without all the uh, the wood right there. And you can see it is pretty small. Uh, at least not tiny, but very compact. And here's the blue circuit. And it basically takes each of the um, hands and converts them backwards into a single block input. So, um, those inputs are all over the place, and each one of those is um, going to be converted backwards again into a single line. So, there's a single line of single inputs, and that is done by the red circuit right here. So, um, we have, uh, and then this goes back again into the lime one, which is a signal strength decoder. So it basically gives one output uh, for per signal strength. So that's pretty important because whatever the signal strength is, it'll give one output, and that goes to a single block input on the blue circuit, and that goes to one of the hands. Now, if you notice, there is only 12 wide, I mean, it's only 11 wide, and there are 12 hands, but there is also one input input line, so 
uh, two of the hands have to be uh, calculated through redstone logic rather than just the decoder. Now if we go back even further, we can look at the uh, light blue circuit, and that is basically the master signal strength just calculator, or at least it uh, stores it stores all the signal strengths. So basically, um, it's a bunch of comparators that all run into each other, and when the piston uh, goes up and back down, so it'll be decreased by one signal strength, and it makes the hand go around by one hour. So this happens through the gray circuit, which allows piston to come up and uh, make the signal strength go down. So um, this only happens once every about 50 seconds. And that is, the time is kept rather um, with a bunch of T flip-flops instead of a, a master hopper clock because um, if you can see with the yellow circuit, the um, it resets all of them when the signal strength of the <laughs> daylight sensor is can output a greater signal than what is coming out of the little hopper. I don't know if you can see that or not, but when that is high enough, when the sun's high enough in the sky, it will start this little hopper clock, and when it gets right above in the center of the sky, then it will set off the um, reset system which is pretty complicated and it'll reset all the T flip flops and it'll come up and reset the signal strength counter in the blue circuit to back up to 15 and that will that will reset the entire clock back to 12 o'clock noon and then um, but and I don't know if you saw it at the end there's a little purple circuit and that's basically just a uh, a little tile entity update detector and it will detect when the signal string changes and give a little note block um, output. So, so yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, I just hope you guys enjoyed this episode or this, this video because uh, I don't know. It's been it's been ages since I've recorded. And uh, yeah, so I'm sorry for the lack of episode, the lack of uh, videos, but it is now summer and I have a lot more time than I did during school. I mean, I still have stuff. I have football and and, uh, and I have to search for colleges. My dad wants me to get a job. That, all that kind of stuff. But still less than uh, during school. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.